Hi, I'm Mark Cluggle and welcome to Academy Live and today we're talking the sales of photography. Uh, recently we put a uh, survey out to some of our business members on the Photographer Academy and got their questions back and then Brandon in his good old way he's kind of narrowed them down to the kind of the most top 10 questions that we had to give you some idea. So uh, I'll try and make it as good as I can, as brief as I can, but basically we'll tackle each of those main questions going through with it. Remember we're live, so if you've got your own questions, then please feel free to get them in on the chat panel, and we'll basically do those uh, guaranteed today and things really. Um, if, if you don't know anything about me and the Photographer Academy, we're an online training company for photographers. I've been a photographer, man and boy, since the age of 18 when I left school and went to work for a photographer. Launched our own studio at the age of 21, and based basically from there on uh, being photographer and then kind of retired and back into the training element and so on with it. But uh, we're in Studio 2 uh, in our church studios as such really and uh, we've set it up uh, specifically for viewing because this is our changing rooms room. This is the one where we kind of change things to kind of uh, suit the different genre of photography which we've been doing on YouTube uh, live se sessions in the past few months. So. Um, if you uh, want to see some of our training, go over to the photographeracademy.com, thephotographeracademy.com, uh, and then you'll be able to actually see some uh, stuff there and things really. Right, question one. Um, why use digital software for slideshow for your photography sales? I think that refers to that many software packages include an instant slideshow, even the likes of Lightroom and basically Bridge, Pro Select and Fuddy and the likes of many others, uh, they all allow you to go instantly into a full screen slide, uh, slideshow. Some even allow your own dedicated mu uh, mu music. Um, however, in the sales room environment, in the face to face sales room environment, I still kind of opt for an Animoto uh, slideshow, a much more funkier product. It, it is, you have to kind of subscribe. You do get a 30 second proof one, I think it is, but most of our slideshows run for about three and a half to four minutes. And the reason I use Animoto uh, rather than just an instant one from within a program is because it is a product for sale at the end of the session and exists on a price list. If it doesn't exist on the price list, then I could just use Bridge and basically just show the images straight away. But realistically, what I'm looking to do is basically uh, have a product that is visible and selling. There's nothing worse than walking into a store or a shop and basically seeing some great furniture and you go, oh, I really like that. And you ask somebody, uh, do, you, do you sell this in the store? And they go, oh no, it's just for display. And it's kind of a bit frustrating then because obviously you, you kind of want something that you can't buy or you've got to go looking for it. So I always try and show something that is available to sale straight away. And Animoto, I know it's a little bit more of a cost compared to others, um, but it's basically, it's still at the, top, at the top of the tree. I think they launched around about six to eight months before we launched the Photographer Academy 13 years ago in 2009. I think they launched in 2008, but uh, yeah, a long, long time, time ago. Okay, next quest, question. Um, why use the reveal wall for photography sales? Okay, so there's different genres of photography that work really, really well with the likes of... Um, um, the likes of the reveal wall. If you're not familiar with the reveal wall, basically a reveal wall is prints in mounts of some kind, yes, that kind of uh, go on to some kind of shelving. This is just a, a shel shelving from the likes of Ikea, yeah? Um, but this basically allows you to uh, have a kind of an uncovering of printed images. The reason that many photographers use the likes of a reveal wall um, especially if they're an unconfident salesperson, they feel that the image alone will sell to the client, which I really agree with as well, okay? So if you are an unconfident in the sales room, you're just getting going, I can understand why you would basically use the reveal wall because the client is gonna pick up chatter, make an assessment before they kind of decide whether it's going to be a part of their selection. Whereas um, that's good, it tends to actually minimize the sale the majority of the time instead of maximizing the sale. 
It doesn't mean with more and more experience that the uh, reveal wall doesn't become a major part of your sales room experience with it. Um, however, uh, if you just kind of just interested to narrow in down from 30 odd photographs to 10 and basically they're buying a box of images, you, you kind of find yourself into a rhythm that is very, very hard to break. So um, from time to time, once you get going with the reveal wall, try and find things like packages and collections that will encompass other things to help you grow with your sales as well within things really. So I would say uh, why to use the reveal wall, definitely if you're an unconfident or you're looking to get going. Uh, however, I usually kind of jump you straight into the deep end as far as uh, uh, the likes of um, selling via television or the likes of a projection screen. I find that a much better way because that's what I'm trained as and that's what we train at for and things really. How do you add value to your USB products? Okay, so the first things first is don't always include all digital images within a USB product, number one. So in other words, if you usually uh, give all the session viewing choice. So if you show the client 30 photographs, we usually actually try and shoot um, a, four, a 48 different variety to present to the client. So in other words, we might shoot 200, 220 shots. Out of that, we'll choose the best 48 photographs. That's what we present to the clients. By alone, if I was using the reveal wall, we'd need quite a large reveal wall, even with an eight inch print to actually kind of get away with that. Uh, but we reveal 48 photographs via the slideshow and basically the choice selection. Um, as far as the uh, extra USB kind of uh, value then, of course, instead of just uh, including five, let's say you do a package or they book in a session online, it includes five digitals, the way instantly to add value to the USB is to uh, um, sell more images. Another way is to um, add the likes of prints and mounts to that package. So the likes of one of our boxes uh, will not only have the prints in them, but they'll also have a USB kind of place to actually store the file as well with it and things really. So that's another way, but of course those are all extras that they're going to add on to the sale. So that will add uh, extra value. I would say the quality of the USB and the brand look and feel of the USB is another way to add value to it, in fact, to make it worthwhile. So, um, you know, I, I would still say the likes of for uh, most wedding photography and for most boudoir photography, something like a heart jeweled style of USB is really great. Um, if it's for portraiture, then you can go with studio brand, uh, branding, whatever kind of genre of photography that you're going for. Try and get it studio engraved so at least clients know it has some added value. And of course, to even box in it. Uh, can work well as well. There's a, a very big, big franchise in the UK, or was a very big franchise in the UK, and they used to supply their um, USB in a metal tin, um, and it looks, uh, you know, a lot more kind of money than it just a, a normal kind of USB that you buy off the shelf. Um, so added value straight away is adding those things together. Um, how to present your images when you're using digital software and digital slideshow. Uh, two different things there. Um, first things first, I wouldn't add borders to them or whatever it would be, okay? So the client would be seeing, just to see it on screen now, the fully edited photograph that is cropped as I want to actually show the client. Um, as far as the uh, presentation, the client would be seeing the image edited as much as I can for the actual show, but we wouldn't be adding borders around them, whatever it would be. Um, as far as um, for the digital printing is concerned, um, I would still go to the point, especially with the reveal wall, if I was going to a finished product, it would need to be fully finished because otherwise it's a waste of print. We're expecting those prints to go straight into the box and ship out if that's what you're going to be doing. So how to present your images in the digital slideshow is one thing. Use, if we go back to Animoto for a minute, with the slideshow, we don't create a different style of Animoto template for each of our genres, uh, sorry, for each of the uh, kind of um, sessions that I do, but we do have a template specific to each of the genres of photography. So we would have a slightly different look and feel to the slideshow for boudoir photography as we would for child or for family and, and so on with it. So we would present them in that way.
As far as the uh, image is concerned, uh, we tend to use, um, in, the, in the likes of Fuddy here, a slightly smaller file. It makes it quicker for us to actually show. You can use the full res image, all right? But just to make it easy for me, um, basically to upload to both Animoto, to sticky albums for our digital album app, and for the Fuddy soft, uh, the software, as we finish the photograph, we run the whole set of images through an action to reduce them down to 2,000 pixels. And then those are the ones that we upload pretty much at the same time to Animoto, to Sticky, and actually import into Fundy. Um, if we're designing an album, we're using the full resolution images, of course. And as a part of our family portrait photography and our child photography, we do design albums as well. So a slightly different kind of route in, in flow of images. Uh, do you finish your images for each shoot when presenting, uh, whether it's a reveal wall or digital? Uh, yes, uh, they are 99% finished. So in other words, if uh, a client is seeing an eight inch here, or they're seeing a 30 or a 40 inch kind of image in a frame, um, we've got one over there if I just wander across a minute. So uh, we've got a 40 inch glass here, yeah? Um, and basically the images would be fully finished to more or less uh, the size. Um, but I would just do a quick look and feel to the image uh, before I'm basically sending it off to the likes of the finisher or the lab. Um, when we're doing the kind of the multi-image layout like we're seeing here, this is a product by Kaleidoscope, Frey, Frey, Frey Framing. This is an IF08. Um, it's a, basically a 20 inch with three smaller nine inch images to the side. Our best selling product is the IF11. It's one of the ones that I pretty much encourage all our experience group to have on their walls. The great thing about it is that these aren't four images in one frame, they're separate images so they can be spread around the home. As far as the um, uh, uh, product is as concerned, the, the IF11 is a 30 inch image with 10 inch images and they look absolutely great uh, as far as their, co uh, their combination. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure if, shall I just grab that one off the wall? I'm not sure if that's visible on screen. Uh, but this is uh, one of the uh, IF11. So this is the 30 inch version of the 20 inch image. Uh, and I would say that if you're selling uh, digital uh, on a screen as it were um, and it's a television screen or you're selling online I would sell I would try and shoot more uh, landscape photography than I would basically portrait photography in other words not that but that and the reason being it can look like it's filling the screen a lot better than the basic but that's the IF11 size 30 inch yeah okay what else, what else we got um, what is the best genre of photography to utilize the reveal wall? There's a, a, a common denominator going through these questions today. There's a lot about reveal wall. I think it's because we did that full series on boudoir photography and so on. Anyway, what is the best genre of photography to utilize for the reveal wall? Um, I would try and avoid families. I would try and avoid some specialization like newborn photography because we're expecting to sell much bigger and more of. Um, the likes of bud boudoir photography, fe female photography like makeovers and so on, really, really good. If you're doing child kind of campaigns or promotions, those would be good for a reveal wall as well, especially because they're in instant, they can make that choice straight away to walk away with. Um, so I would pretty much uh, save the reveal wall to stay away from anything that will have a much higher average sale with the likes of family photography, where they're buying much bigger images in a frame and so on. Um, what is the best genre of photography to utilize uh, digital selling? I, I think what they mean to that is the face-to-face -face selling. Um, pretty much everything, okay? So I would encourage you, even with your boudoir photography, if possible, to basically go, uh, sell on the likes of a television or whatever you would do, okay? Uh, the projector's just switched off a minute because I didn't give it any feed. Let, let me just switch that on for one second. Um, and I'll swap across the feed to it once we're kind of up and running on that. Um, but basically, as far as digital is concerned, um, digital viewing, what we've got here is a very, very large screen. 
So that means we've got an opportunity to sell very, very large images. And if we're trying to, if I just kind of just move away from the image viewer a minute and we look onto the in the room set, you can see if you, you know, this is a 30 30 in the middle and this is a 20 by 30 on each end. And I can basically quickly swap the layouts. Um, to the different kind of size, size and so on. So if we're working through with a client and we can give them an idea on how small a 30 by 24 is in a home as well as how small a 12 by 16 is. So let me just move that across over to there a minute. That should send the signal across to my projector. There we go. Um, so in, in the same way, when a client is sat around about 12 feet away from a screen, um, they're basically, if you're just showing them the image up close, what do I mean by that? If I just double click on a photograph on Fundy for a minute, uh, let's go to one of the fav, fav, favorites. So if we're kind of going through the um, image, let me just go into the filters. We'll go into the five star. We should have the client choice there, okay? So as far as this image is concerned, we get a choice to actually show the image in a size. Uh, and this is where we always start with the digital sale. And the reason we're doing that is that we're concentrating on size. So if I just kind of steal that one off the wall for a minute, we know this is 30, 30 by 20, yeah? You can see that pretty much we're very close to the size that we're selling at. Um, and if I want to, I can basically show it in the exact say, same size to the client that I'm suggesting that they buy it as. Now, let's face it, not everybody wants to buy wall art, but what I'm trying to do is have an opportunity to sell wall art. The, one of the key things that I'll, I'll kind of encourage you to do, especially if you're transforming a room from a studio into a viewing room, is to wherever the clear wall is, yes, um, so you might have even removed photographs or removed the background, or this could even be a roll of paper that you've dropped down to actually do it. I, I would tend to actually go onto a white, a white wall like we're doing here. But I would make sure that either side of the projection screen or either side of your television screen are the products that you want them to focus in on. So in other words, if we were looking at the IF11, we'd have the three images below here as well. Um, and I want to make sure that we're concentrating on that uh, 40 inch glass as well perhaps and things really so as far as the uh, digital projection is concerned um, it's nice and bright and light they don't have to see every pore of the skin all right it's for you to make sure things are sharp that are going onto the screen before anything else let me just swap back to the television because this is where the quest uh, the questions are um, so as far as the um, the best genre, uh, genre. Um, anything that you feel that is um, going to result in wall art, yes, I would go um, projection or television screen. Um, anytime you have multi uh, um, people from the same fam family, so in other words, you might have the grandparents plus the parents and basically we're not interested in the kids at the viewing room because they'll just distract if possible. We'll encourage the client not to actually bring them with them. There's tips and tricks for that. Um, but as far as when we're looking at multi-generational, multi-siblings within the same viewing, uh, which is often the case for a big family shoot, I wanna make sure everybody can see it clear and they can basically make their choice. In that type of viewing room, we're not just selling the group photograph to one set of pe people. That multi-sibling might be buying the big wall art for their mum and dad for a big anniversary. Um, but in the same way, because in the session, I've taken individual families as well, and individual mum and dads and individual kids, there's, there's, all, there's almost kind of mul a multi-selling room going on and, and it takes a little bit of time. What do I mean by that? It means that the first thing that we would concentrate in the sales room would be for the grandparents, the gift. That's usually the one under a time delay that I need to get together. Then we will go through the, which I feel is going to be the biggest buyer out of the siblings. So one part of the fam family will probably be a bigger buyer. And what I don't want to do is get the, the person that I feel will spend the least 
taking part in the buying process of their photographs first. So there is a little bit of psychology and if you operate with some, somebody doing your selling, it's your job as the photographer to try and give them as much information as you can. So you say, look, I would really try and concentrate on Pete and Jan and the kids first before you then go into Phil and Elaine and the kids uh, and so on and so on. And, and it's just your best guess. That's really what you're trying to achieve. So the best genres of photography to use digital slide slideshow is definitely for big groups without a doubt but for me I would use it in all things that I do um, how to prepare for the viewings um, well the first thing is edit edit hard we never want to show a multiple series of images of the similar photographs it's your job to choose the best of the best of the best otherwise you're going to spend more time editing with the client their selection whereas if they're presented with four 48 amazing photographs pretty much all diff different completely then basically you, they're going to be told right at the beginning of the viewing that all of these will fit into one of our albums uh, all of them will fit into our print boxes whatever you want to do kind of thing with it then you can just look let's concentrate on choosing our favorites for the wall and then you can go through a steady process with it so for me as I touched on already I would prepare the image as near as going to print as possible and if you are as I've mentioned already go into a, a, a reveal wall they they should be at 99.9% .9 kind of finished uh, except if you screw one up and you realize it at the viewing stage do you finish your images before digital viewing okay I just answered that question absolutely yes 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 no matter what um, how to set up the viewing room uh, transition from shoot to viewing Brandon I think we did that on one of the changing rooms or multiple changing rooms didn't we I'm not sure which one we did it on but I'm sure we did it in boudoir, and I'm sure we did it in headshot photography as well, in fact, uh, where we were turning this studio space, five me uh, meters, just short of five meters by five me me meters, into not only a multi um, si uh, sided studio, but we also did it from the actual uh, uh, view in itself and things, really. So, um, the first thing that I would do, if you're going to concentrate on a reveal wall let's start there first the first thing would be is to ensure that the reveal wall doesn't dominate your viewing or studio space make sure you've got something that can actually hide the reveal wall not because you're showing other pe people's photographs but so that you've got a multi background to shoot towards we just don't want it to dominate so whether it's a pop-up background or a curtain or whatever it would be if you're using a television, have it away from the main shooting area, uh, shooting area. I don't want kids concentrating on a television when I'm trying to photograph them and so on with it. But if you've got a makeup uh, area going on for your boudoir or your makeover photography, then make sure you've got a funky kind of slideshow running during the whole course of the actual session, giving them ideas on products and what they can buy. So we're doing almost like a secret sales kind of uh, um, uh, you know push towards the beginning of their experience with us um, but as far as the digital sale on the television is concerned make sure the television doesn't dominate your room it's hidden away in very much the same way as a reveal wall that it can be covered over and things uh, and the great thing <laughs> the projector just switched itself off again because I I switched off the feed that's the great thing about the uh, the kind of the projectors is that obviously if they're not on if they're not getting a feed they'll just save their bulb life and everything else with it and things really um, um, so as far as uh, a projector, we'll, uh, projector we'll, we'll not worry about it switching off for now, but uh, I touched on already, what we want to do is basically have a, a wall that is big enough based on the throw of the projector that you're u using. If your projector is a behind the client, uh, may, make sure it's perhaps ceiling mounted so it's never in the way uh, to save your kind of tra transition. Uh, I once saw uh, a visiting a photographer's studio with it uh, for some business advice and basically <laughs> Um, they brought a set of A ladders out and they put a piece of wood across the two of the runs and they put the projector on it. It was like, what an experience that, uh, that is. And, and, and we soon changed that with them in many ways, just buying them a, a tether tools trough to actually put on top of a light stand instant and quickly anyway. Um, but if you are using this as a part of your photography or you're hanging photographs on it during the course of the session, make sure you paint the screws 
so uh, the same color as the wall, which should be white. So at least you can then basically um, uh, not kind of stick out like a sore thumb, a, a, a silver screw or whatever it would be and things really. But uh, again, where possible, just have that clear space where you know you're gonna use. And because I use a white wall so much, you know that the perfect thing for me is the uh, space that we're using for the white wall photography, whether they're leaning on it or whatever it is, that's not being kind of interrupted with anything, so I can use that as a part of my main sales. Um, what programs to use for viewings? I think I touched on it already. Um, however, if um, software stops you from getting going within person sales, take that away, just use Lightroom or Bridge, okay? Don't worry about it. Um, then in time, when you are absolutely nailing your uh, uh, viewing, so in other words, you're doing say five a week, then at least you can invest into your software. And again, as I mentioned, this Pro, this Pro Select, originally designed for wedding photographers uh, and kind of the um, uh, senior, uh, senior photography in, in, in the USA. Um, but as far as portrait photography, I don't think it's as powerful as everybody makes it out to be, mainly because they've only got three faces, which is basically an upside down unhappy face, then an average straight line uh, emoji face, and then a smiley face. Whereas the reality is if I'm showing the photographs all to the client, everything should start with no star rating, and then we can basically, we know they're gonna have them all, or we're presuming they are, then we can build them up to actually end up with their favorites as such. So as far as uh, the program that I use, you know by now it's basically Fundy, and if we kind of just uh, shut that image viewer down, you can see at the top here, you might be able to see the top here, we've got basically album design, room design, slide uh, slideshows, etc. Uh, um, and we can kind of do many, many things within the likes of the software and not just actually do the viewing. Uh, that's all the questions that you gave to me, Braddon. Um, anything else that you've got me live? One more. One more question come in live. Go, go, go. Okay, good question that. What's my experience with same day sales compared to the client coming back at a, a different time? So the first things first, um, if we're doing the traditional callback of a client, so in other words, they're coming back to view the photographs on another day, make sure that happens within two weeks of the session. Every day after that two weeks, the sale will start to diminish and the photographs and the experience will become less and less important. So um, I, we, we've always worked in kind of getting the clients back in uh, following the shoot uh, within two weeks as such. Um, that's the way we work. It gives us more time. It's more kind of preparation. Uh, we allow an hour for edit and prep ready for all finish. So that's what we really try and do. So kind of the, hard, the hardest part of the first hour of, of workflow is kind of getting that 10 to 15 minute edit finished and choosing the 48 shots, then finishing them uh, through the raw pro processor before we final finish uh, some of the images within the likes of Photoshop. So as far as the, uh, the, the benefit of bringing them back on another day, you, you do take that time, uh, um, you stretch time, which allows us then to kind of get what I feel is a better finished product in front of the client. Um, but you know, same day sales can, can work, but what the one thing that we've got to do is really prepare the client for the sales room leading up to the session. And that can kind of, uh, um, it can take the, the whole fun of the experience away. Now, obviously we're professional, which means we're there to earn money from it. That's what we're kind of doing it for, as it were. Um, even though we love to take photographs, when you're an amateur photographer, the great thing is that there's no problem. You, you love it. You're, you're not worried about if anybody uh, likes your photographs, but you are. People want actually to be recognized, but you're not bothered if they're buying from them from you. Once you transition to the world of professional photography, that means you're earning money from your photography. So um, in the um, coming back or the return to, to the viewing in a few weeks, it means we have a chance to do our post-session pre-selling or the kind of preparing the client ready for the viewing. Whereas on the same day viewing, instant view or within a few hours, we really need to prepare that client a little bit more. Uh, 
they can have uh, very, very similar results with some photographers. Everybody's different. Uh, I know for the big sales in families and the likes of, we really need a return. We need a session without kids in a room, especially teen kids, in fact, which can kind of kill a sales room like that. Uh, compared to a three-year-old, that might be a distraction. But if we've got a group of kind of unusual toys or books within the room, we can use, usually find a, a distraction for them and allow mum and dad to concentrate. That's why we need to make sure that we're at the edit stage as far as when the client comes into the viewing room, they're pretty much into final selection at 20 minutes. Um, so we've gone through all the slide, the slideshow, the selection modules, then they're into the best of the best of the best by the time of, of no later than 20 minutes within the hour. And then basically the next 20 minutes will be final decisions and then checking out as it were. Whereas in the same day viewings, uh, you're a little bit more rushed getting the images prepared uh, the client might not be seeing exactly what you perceive in your head so you're kind of having to explain or base it on other photographs that you've got around the place and of course what we'll do is retouch the wrinkles here or slim the hips here look whatever it would be but uh, again for me I would always work in post session any more questions there Brandon yeah, one, more. one more question come through Yep. Um, what are my thoughts on in-house studio pay, uh, the, pay, uh, the payment plans? I think what Brandon means by that, uh, or the question is, is where you're not using a third party supplier like an interest-free credit, but you're actually the credit company. Um, it's something um, that I want, so interest-free credit, we introduced into my experience group uh, towards the end of 2019. Immediately, the interest-free credit took the businesses to a different level, a uh, huge, huge increase in the sales room. However, pretty much all our photographers and studios in the experience group were, off, were offering spread pay, uh, payment plans anyway. The biggest problem with that is when do you release the images? If you release the images too soon and there's still a debt to be paid by the client, you're gonna spend your time chasing debt and you or the client is not gonna have a good experience on that. If you hang on to the images right until the end of the client uh, basically paying their final payment as such, the biggest problem you're gonna have, you could have some stuff actually on your shelves um, hanging around for a year or so and basically people kind of um, just not being able to actually afford what they've bought or something's changed in their lives or they've just forgotten and now they're less important than ever before. So um, I would say that as far as um, having spread payment, spread payment plans within your business that you're controlling yourself, the negative in that is basically the, the bad debt and, and a cash flow. Uh, because e even though you might have done, you know, a thousand pound in a day, let's say, um, if four or five of those clients are spreading that money over four or five weeks or even four or five months, the problem for you is you're not getting all that money in. When do you place the order at the lab? I would say um, two payments away from finishing if it was say six. So by the time you've got the fourth payment full, you want to have that order ready by the fifth pay fifth payment because probably most clients will come in and actually pay ahead of time as it were. But if you've got the ability to take an IFC, an interest-free credit facility within your, biz your business, I would definitely explore those routes. Thank you very much for joining me live. See you next week. I'm sure we've got several sessions planned for next week and uh, we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.